Welcome to Michelle's Making. Hope you're ready for coffee, crafts, cookies, and cocktails. Let's get going. Welcome, and welcome back to those of you who are returning. I really do appreciate that. I hope you enjoy what you see and you give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so and help the channel grow. I do appreciate that. Today is National Name Yourself Day. So if you don't like your name today, you can be called anything you like. It's also former POW Recognition Day, which I think is a really important thing to recognize and remember the individuals who served time as POWs or maybe didn't even return after being a POW. We have much gratitude to you who have served our country. Cherish Antique Day, Winston Churchill Day, Unicorn Day, and Chinese Almond Cookie Day. So keep those things in mind as you go through your day. Let's get going with some coffee. Today, vanilla caramel is the creamer of the day. So we'll get a little caffeine boost going and make it a great day and let's get to crafting. Our first craft is a hexagon Lazy Susan. For this, I picked up a hexagon shaped piece of birch wood off of Home Depot online. I began by removing the label and applied a little heat to help this along. It did leave a little bit of residue behind, so I sanded that off just to give a nice smooth finish. I also sanded the edges as they were a little rough. I purchased the Lazy Susan mechanism off of Amazon. It came in a two-pack with the screwdriver and screws, everything needed. I began by staining the wood with this oops stain I had picked up at Home Depot for $2.50, which is an excellent price on stain. And I used a soft cloth to rub the stain into the wood. And once that was completed, including the edges and the back, I wiped off the excess with a paper towel. Next, I measured from point to point opposite on all three intersections to find the center of the piece of wood so I could center the Lazy Susan mechanism. Next, I wanted to make an edge for the Lazy Susan and I did this using paint sticks. I took six paint sticks and marked where they needed to be cut and once I had done that, I used my miter shears to cut them. I thought I might use my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white to go for a contrasting look on the edge. So I started by painting them white. And after doing that, I decided I probably didn't like the big contrast between the wood stain and the white. So I decided to use my antique wax paint and go over the white kind of lightly at first. And then I decided I wanted it even darker. And once I had done that, I sanded it down a little to give it a distressed look. With this type of thing, you can go back and forth with how much uh, distressing you want or maybe even add a little more of the white in if you preferred. Um, just play around with it till it looks good to you. Give everything a coat of the Minwax Polyacrylic Clear Spray and once that had dried began to attach my mechanism. I did that first by marking where the screws needed to go after I had centered it. This wood is fairly soft, so I was able just to use the screwdriver to make a little indention where the screws were going to go. I screwed in all four of the screws. Once the mechanism was attached, I knew I needed something on the bottom to keep it from scraping up any surface that I set it on. And I had gotten some extra cabinet doorstop dots <laughs> when I purchased the new cabinets for our kitchen 
and I used four of those in each of the corners to give it a little cushioning and that actually worked out perfectly. They cushioned the surface and kept it from sliding around. Next, using Gorilla Wood Glue and some hot glue, I attached the individual paint sticks. Now, when I did this, I did two at a time opposite sides and propped it up to dry. I was really thinking that I would then use maybe some wood filler or putty in between each piece so it would give it a completely sealed look around the edges. But actually, after I had all six pieces attached, I liked the way it looked with the little spacing in between. Sometimes that's just the way crafting works. It evolves as you go along in your project. And sometimes those oops moves are actually things that lead you in the direction that the craft is supposed to go. For the finishing step, I decided to stencil the word live in the center of the tray. I had picked up this set of stencils off of Amazon and I really liked the script that was used for this. For this, I used my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white and a round sponge stencil brush to dab up and down using that dabbing technique to prevent bleed underneath. Something I have learned about stenciling is it seems to get better results if you start out very lightly with a small amount of paint on your stencil brush or sponge and go straight up and down. It dries quickly this way and you can go over it repeatedly to get it darker if that's what you prefer. And there you have it, our Hexagon Lazy Susan. Our next craft is a stay sign. I had picked up a sign at Goodwill that was regularly priced $1.29, half price the day I picked it up. So for 65 cents, I cleaned up the sign and discovered that it had been previously painted with chalk paint as well because some of that came off. In fact, a great deal of it came off. I then used my chalk paint from Waverly in the color ink, which is their black, and gave it a good coating all around the edges and on the inside. I did leave a little bit of the white showing through because I was going to distress the intricate details with white. Next, using my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white and a dry brushing technique, I gave some depth and dimension with the distressing look to the intricate detail. I left the interior frame portion solid black. I really liked the way that contrasting look appeared. Next, I applied a piece of black adhesive vinyl to the backing on the frame. Next, using my Cricut Design Space, I cut out a vinyl decal that said, sit down and stay a while. With the new decor and remodeling in the house, it's going to go with a little bit more of a farmhouse style, and this is going to look perfect. Our stay sign. Let's wrap things up with a peanut butter cup martini. I'll include the complete recipe in the description box. This drink will be mixed in a shaker over ice using half and half peanut butter flavored whiskey and whipped cream liqueur. Start, of course, with your crushed ice, adding our whiskey, our whipped cream liqueur, and oh yes, I forgot, creme de cacao. After you add the creme de cacao, you'll add the half and half. You're going to shake until very well chilled and pour into a chilled martini glass. This drink can be garnished with just a little bit of cocoa powder. The next step, is to enjoy this delicious peanut butter cup martini. Well, folks, that's it for another week. Thank you so much for sticking around. I do appreciate it. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and help the channel grow. Share with your family and friends. I appreciate that. Let's make it a great week. Don't forget to take time to stop and smell the coffee. See you next Friday.